Oh, for grace Thank you, Joe. Be opening your Bibles this evening to Philippians chapter 2, the New Testament, Philippians chapter 2, as we continue to study on Sunday evenings about who we are or should be. Who we are or should be. Philippians chapter 2. Begin with me this evening in verse 12 and read down through the first part of verse 16. Listen to what is being said or follow along silently. So then, my beloved, just as you've always obeyed, Not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who is at work in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Do all things without grumbling or disputing, so that you will prove yourselves to be blameless and innocent, children of God above reproach in the midst of a crooked and a perverse generation, among whom you appear as lights in the world, holding fast the word of life. Stay with me tonight. So then, my beloved brothers, just as you have always obeyed, not in my presence only, but now also in my absence, work Work, work, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Work. It's a four-letter word. And it's one of those four-letter words that's used a whole lot less than the other four-letter words. Work. Work. Now I know, and we've, we've studied about it over and over again, that it's by grace that we've been saved through faith. Now we must have faith, that's true. But it's by grace that we've been saved. It's not, it's not God, God doing half and us doing half. It's not God doing 75% and us doing 25%. It, it's not God saying, okay, Mike, you just jump just as high as you can possibly jump and, and reach as far out as you can reach, and I'll, I'll catch your hand wherever you are. It's, it's not me doing everything I possibly can and then God making up the difference. It's all God. It's all God. Because you take the blood of Jesus out of the equation, and we're lost. I mean, we're lost. It makes absolutely no difference how hard we may work or what else we may do. If it was not for the blood of Jesus Christ, there would be no salvation. And that's, that's why and we'll, t- we'll talk about it more next Sunday morning and, and then the, the, the Sunday morning after that again, the Lord allowing time to continue. But that's why Abraham was rejoicing. Not, not only did Jesus say that Abraham saw his day and, and rejoiced, but he said, and he did see and was glad. A- Abraham saw, the, through, through faith, he saw, and, and it has an impact on everything. He, he saw that Jesus was coming. Jesus is the promised one. Now, don't, 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 don't put down the, the men and women who lived of old. Now, there, there certainly were things that they did not understand to the extent of knowing how God was going to work it all out. How is all, all these pieces to come together? And, and, and Peter talks about that in, in, in that he's saying these, the, the prophets of, of old and, and these holy men of God that, that wrote the Scripture, they're, they're reading it and, and they, they understand what's going on, but they don't know how it's all going to fit. How is God going to bring all this about? And, and it's as though they were trying to, to, to peek over. They're on their tiptoes trying to look over the fence to see exactly what God's going to be doing whenever the fulfillment of His promise, of His covenant comes about. But Abraham did see. Don't, don't, don't forget that. Don't miss that. Abraham did see. And he rejoiced over it. 
Uh, okay, okay, I'm going to say it anyway. Uh, I'm, I'm, there, there's so much there. When I'm not going to spoil the, uh, the, the, the lesson whenever we get to Genesis chapter 22 when, when he's ready to, to offer Isaac as a sacrifice. And then Hebrews tells us that, that by faith he was willing to do that because he, he believed God, but he believed that God was able to raise Isaac from the dead. You see, there had to be an Isaac. And Abraham knew that. Abraham understood that. Because if there's not an Isaac, then there won't ever be a Jesus. I mean, it, it is through Abraham's seed, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, that Jesus is going to come. And Abraham understands that. And so he, he trusts God so much that he was, even, he was even willing to offer his son knowing that God had the power to raise him from the dead, because God had already made a covenant. God had already walked. God had already walked that bloody trail through, through the, the animal halves. But then he says to us, work, you, you work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Work. It, it's, it's not a bad word. Fear and trembling are great words. I, can, I cannot thank you enough. I really cannot thank you enough for all of the, the, the amazing opportunities that you give me to sit quietly and study. And, and I, 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 really, I really wish you could be with me there, but I, I don't guess we'd sit quietly if you were there too. But... But I cannot tell you the number of times that, that as, I'm, as I'm studying that I actually tremble. As, as pieces come together and, and, and I begin to, to, to feel, I mean feel, and, and, and feeling is not a bad thing. You know, don't, don't take emotion out, out of our relationship with God. God is, is emotional. He made us this way. But he said, you, you work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Now, he doesn't leave it there. He, he, he doesn't leave it there. And, 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 and he's, he's not trying to, to, to come up with, with, Paul's not trying to come up with some other avenue to God, but he's telling us of our individual responsibilities before God. And they're there. And they're They're strong. And the truth is, even though without the blood of Jesus Christ, there is no salvation, if you don't put forth the effort to work out your own salvation, there will be no salvation for you. Now that's not a contradiction. Because they go together. And, and listen to what he's saying. With, you, you, work, you work out your, your salvation with, with fear and trembling. For it is God, it is God who works in you. So, so these little, little sayings that, that uh, you know, the, the magnets or, or, or bookmarks or whatever, let go and let God, no, that doesn't fit. That doesn't fit with what the Bible says. Because God has just said, Work out your own salvation. He said, you have responsibility before God. You cannot, you cannot sit back as, as part of the body of Christ. And, and, and this, this is imperative for, for, for what we have laid before God and, and, and what the elders have, have laid before you as a congregation. What's, what's coming up if God allows August to get here? This, this campaign, this We Care campaign, is not a small thing. It's, it's an enormous thing. But there's going to be enormous fruit come from it. God will give the increase. But we have responsibility, individual responsibility. You can't sit at the back, and uh, I'm not talking about those of you who are sitting at the back, so don't... Please don't. I would walk back there, but but they we stream our services and and so people go. Well, where is he? You know, 
who, who's speaking. And, and I'd, I'd preach from back there, but you, you, cannot, you cannot just sit and, and go along for the ride. It, it doesn't work that way. For it is God, it is God, did, did I say that already? It is Yahweh who works in you. Now, two years ago, we were studying about God in us. About God, God in us. And, and God talks about that. that, that and and that, that itself is, is really beyond, beyond my ability, beyond this finite mind to, to fully drink in because God tells me in Colossians that, that I can be filled with the very fullness of God. That all of God can live in me. When I realize at the same time from, from what God had Solomon write in his prayer at the dedication of the temple in, in 1 Kings chapter 8, he, Solomon says, even the heavens themselves cannot contain God. And we mentioned that this morning, that the further out that we see you, we, we just see further and further. And if we could go right now and, and, and put the Hubble telescope out there as far as we can possibly see anything, if, if we could do that right now and then look that much further, we would see that much more. And, and if, you, if you were ever able to, if you were ever able to go all the way to the edge of what is there, you would see the creation of God expanding. Because it's, 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 a, it's a growing thing. But yet God says that He can, His very fullness can fill me. Now I'm going, see He's lost me. He's, he's, he's lost me because my, my thoughts are not like His thoughts and my ways just like yours are not His ways because His thoughts and His ways are so far above us that they're, that they're beyond our, our understanding. But because God says it, I accept it. I don't know how that works. I don't, I don't know how it all fits together. But here in Philippians chapter 2, when, when we're talking about who we should be, who we are or who we should be. He's saying it's God, not, not an angel, not, not a representative, not, not the, the, the archangel Michael, not, not even the one who is, is, is often referred to as the angel of the Lord, or, or as, as, as Exodus will, will refer, God will refer to the, the angel of the Lord who has my name in him. So evidently there's, there's a very unique a unique angel there. But he says it's God. It's not an angel. It's not a representative. It's, it's God who works in us. If we let Him. You see, of course, first we've got to let Him come in. You know, if we, if we don't let Him in, he, there's not anything He can do with us. He, he's not going to force, he's not going to coerce, and, and that's, that's the way the book of Revelation uh, d describes God. The letters to the seven churches, I stand at the door and knock, and whoever will open the door, I'll come in and I, I, will, I will sup with him. I'll sit down and, and, and share that, that, that intimate time of, of, of fellowship and, and of, of meal. God wants to be in us. So he says, here, here are, these, here are these, these, these two concepts. And, and he says, God wants to be in us, and he is in us. To, it's God who is in us to work his will and his good pleasure. And his good pleasure. Hmm. His pleasure. That he's working in me, he's working with me, 
to accomplish what really pleases Him. Because of, of the time that Judy and I spent in, in Africa, in the, the largest tribal group that... that uh, we, we lived right in the middle of five different tribal groups, but the largest, the, the largest tribal group there, the Legisu, they had trouble with, with English and, and the way that their mind worked. Like, I mean, there's, there's languages that we have trouble, trouble with. We have to learn, if we learn other languages, we have to learn to roll our tongue or we have to learn to click or to cluck or, or, or whatever. And, and, and they they invariably will turn around the L's and the R's. I mean, they, they, they turn around the L's and the R's. And, and uh, I have to tell you, I, I, I don't have to, but I'm, I'm going to tell you about one of the... It, it, made, it made the tribal people, that, the Legisu people, very upset uh, when, whenever the uh, uh, head uh, uh, policeman for, for the, the country was, was brought in because of, of, of a rash of, 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 of armed robberies in, in some of the shops. And... and uh, uh, the, the investigator was, was there the very first day and, and he reported in the newspaper, he said, we already know where to look and we'll find the man and, and it's not going to take any time at all uh, to find him uh, because we, we know what tribal group to look in and, and we, we have a description of him and so this is going to be solved real quickly. And uh, so they asked, they said, so how, how were you able to deduct all of that? And he said, well, when, when the robber would, would come in, he would pull his gun on the store owner and he would say, I'm a lobber and I'm here to lob you. <laughs> because he, he turned his L's and R's around. I'm a lobber and I'm here to lob you. And he said, so we know where to go. Well, that whole tribal group was incensed. And they said, you know, you, you, you've offended us. And, and uh, uh, God's not turning words around here. He, he, doesn't have, he doesn't have a problem in communicating with us. It's us, it's we that need to listen to what, what He's saying. One of the words that they used because of the R's and the L's, they didn't talk about blood pressure, P-R-E-P-R. -E -P There's the R. They talked about blood pleasure. <laughs> so anytime I, I, I read pleasure now, I, I, think, I think about Legisu, and, and, and this man was always coming up to us, asking us to pray for his wife uh, there at church, and, and he said she has blood pre pleasure troubles. <laughs> and I, I would get tickled, and I would try not to laugh just out in front of him. And, and uh, but, uh, that, you know, that, that was how they talked. So I read pleasure, and, and you're going to see a, a sparkle in my eye because I'm, I'm remembering that. God's pleasure. What, what is God's pleasure? What is God's pleasure? He, he works in us, for it is God who, who works in you both to will and to work His good pleasure. What is God's pleasure? What is it that really, truly pleases God. Well, he tells us a lot of things that, that, that please him, a lot of things that, that, that make him happy. You remember several months ago we studied about, about weights and measures. It was in the book of Proverbs, God will go repeatedly, he'll come back to it, and he will say uh, an, an honest, an honest weight, an honest measure delights the Lord. Delight. God gets delight out of knowing that people are honest in their transactions. And, and the, you know, the, the, the way we sometimes look at things, we say, that's such a little thing. You know, God certainly is involved, since He's God, He's involved in, in big things. And, and, and of course He is, but when God reveals Himself to us, He says He delights in a just measure, knowing that people are not being cheated. And he says it's an abomination. Do you remember that? He says it's an abomination. That word means morally disgusting. It makes God sick whenever people have on their person or in their bag dishonest measuring tools because their intent is to cheat people. On one hand, God says it delights Him whenever people are, are honest and fair with each other. And, and on the other hand, God says it, it makes me sick when I realize that people have an intent, 
have an intent. They, they've planned. It's, it, it's malice and a forethought, you know, it, it, because they, they, they planned this. They, they've got the, the dishonest weights. But God says to work to do His, His will and His good pleasure. What is it that pleases God? What, what, is, what, is, all, what is all of this about? For us to be with Him in holiness? That's what it's all about. For us to be with Him. He has always wanted us with Him. What, whatever that takes. And, and, and the reason it's disgusting for God to, to, to see, it makes Him sick for Him to see people who, whose intent is to cheat other people is because those people cannot be with Him. They, they simply cannot be with Him. God says, be holy as I'm holy. That's what brings God pleasure. And, and, and the promise from, from Jeremiah uh, in, in pointing to, to Jesus coming, and, and we'll be there eventually if, if we all live long enough. And, and Jeremiah said, God wants to be our God. And He wants us to be His people. And that's what Paul comes back to. In, in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, whenever he says, come out from among them, from among, who, from, from among the world, and, and be separate, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you to myself, and, and you will be to me as, as children, sons and daughters, and I will be to you as your Father, says the Lord Almighty. That's what gives God pleasure. You know, you know what gives, gives me pleasure? To see my grandchildren. To look at pictures of, of, of when, when my children were born and when, when they were little and, 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 and the memories that, that flood back in. And, and sometimes I can't recognize that, that young man that's there in, in, in some of those pictures or, or movies or, 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 or DVDs. And, and, but he, he's there and, and, it, and, and the memories flood back. It, it's, it's like the, the, new, the new baby and, and the proud daddy that's, that's holding that baby. And he's saying, look, 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 this, this is mine. This is mine. I, I don't understand how it all, all happens, but this, this is mine. That's what God takes pleasure in. And that's why Jesus came. That's why God planned even before man rebelled to redeem man. So two things here in the first part of, of our reading tonight before, before we get up to, to who we are or should be. Two things here. Number one is God's sovereignty. God is God. He, he's always God. There, there is no other God but God. And he, is, he has all authority. And He had the authority to give it to Jesus. To be able to say what we talked about this morning. All authority in heaven and earth has been given unto me is what Jesus said. Well, who gave it to Him? The Father did. And at the end of time, Jesus will take the kingdom, the church, and, and He will deliver it back up to the Father. I don't know what that's going to look like. I don't know how it's all going to happen, but I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there. And I'm going to be part of, 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 of Him delivering this kingdom up to the Father. And then Jesus, then after He has completed His work, His work, which is not His work, but it's also His Father's work. After He's completed it, He will then return all authority to His Father, and He will take His place at the right hand of God. But right now, He, he has all authority. God is sovereign. Don't, don't ever forget that. But man, number two, man has responsibility. Don't ever forget that. Don't ever forget that. Our responsibility, our responsibility to work out our own salvation does not take anything away from, from the, the sovereignty of God. In fact, it's part of the sovereignty of God when we understand that. So you won't go to heaven just by believing. There's things you have to do. There's things you have to do. 
Listen to what he's saying. And that's, and that's exactly how he, he begins in verse 14. He says, do. <laughs> there it is. There's things that you have to do. There's things that I have to do. He says, do all things without... Hmm. This, this, may, this may hurt. Because see, God's pleasure is in us being with Him. And anything that keeps us from being with Him not only hurts us, but hurts God. Not only hurts us, but hurts God. It doesn't mean that we're not a child of God. But we also need to remember that there were those who came up to Jesus and, and said, Jesus even says it in Matthew 7 and, and, and verse 21. He says, many will say to me at that day, what day? The end. The end. Many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? Didn't, didn't we do all these wonderful things in your name? Lord, we know who you are. And Jesus will say to them, depart from me, you that work iniquity. Anything, anything that's close, anything that's close to iniquity, avoid, avoid the very appearance of evil. I know I say this is big a lot, but this is big. And it may hurt. Do, see that's part of the working out that we have responsibility for. Do all things without grumbling. Mm. Some translations will say murmur. You want the definition of murmur? You just say it softly. All by, in fact, everybody just kind of say it softly. Uh, you don't have to say it out really loud, but just say it over and over again. Murmur, murmur, murmur. Come on, help me out. Murmur, 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 murmur. Come on, a little bit louder. Murmur, 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 murmur. murmur. That's what it means. That's what it means. You're throwing up a defense. That's what it is. You're throwing up a defense. You don't want to do what is being suggested. You don't like what is being suggested. It's not your idea. It's not your plan. It's not the way it's always been. It, it's not coming from the one that you wish it would come from. It's, it, you're not in charge. Someone else is now in charge. And, and so they, they say something and you start murmur, 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 because it's not an answer. Is a distraction. It's grumbling. And God says you do all things without tooth. I tell you, whenever God lowers, when God trims the list down to two things, well, I need to listen. I need to listen. Do I ever murmur? I need to stop. Do you ever murmur? Yeah. Well, this is this in the way that we've. Um, well, who you know, do all things without with, without? Boy, the, he, he's already he's, he's already set the stage. He says, "Do all." Does that leave anything out? Do all things without grumbling, murmuring, or disputing. Well, there's just got to be a better way. Why do we have to do it that way? Whose idea of what? In fact, you may even be thinking that right now, saying, all right, who was, it, who was in charge of the, the screening committee whenever they brought Mike up here? What, what, I mean, they look over and they go, oh, well, it's, it's my friend Joe. Okay, and some of them have moved from here. Maybe they did for self-preservation. I don't know what you've been saying to them behind the scenes. Maybe you're saying, where was your head? D disputing. What, what, what is going on here? And we know how that works. We know what that does. In fact, after a while, you, you don't even have to say anything. All you have to do is give that look. And it works, doesn't it? It works. I mean, my dad could turn me 
totally around from whatever it was that I was doing that I shouldn't have been doing. He could turn me all the way around just by a look. I'd whole lot rather mother have given me that look because she forgot. But if daddy gave me that look, I knew that there was going to be an answering when we got home. Just the look. Just someone saying. And, 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 we, 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 and, 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 and on one side, we need to. We need to walk on eggshells around each other. We, we, need to, we need to be careful and handle each other with kid gloves. That's what, that's what Gary was talking about at the end of his lesson this morning. That, that, that we should be kind one to another. Tender-hearted. Forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven us. That's that Ephesians 4 and 32. That's, that's the very heart of, of, of our relationship with each other. At the, at the same time, God says, do all things without these two things. Without grumbling and without disputing. Don't argue about it. You're working out your salvation. You're not working for the city parks department. It doesn't make any difference what kind of flowers are out there. Or if there's any flowers at all. We're talking about our souls here. And, and church, we need, we need to be on top of this completely. We've got to be on top of this. Don't bring someone in. And then mess them up. Don't bring someone in from outside and then mess them up. Don't do that. So do all things without grumbling and without disputing. Oh, we, I say we, hmm, this, this is okay for you to agree. We've got a lot of work to do on ourselves before August gets here, don't we? Yeah. Be, be careful with this. But why, why does he say all of this? Why, why does he talk about work out your own salvation and, and, and then tell us do all things without, without grumbling or, or without disputing? Why, why does he say that? He tells us. He tells us. So that. That you may be. That you may prove yourself. Do you remember when we talked about that word prove last week? You remember when we talked about that word prove? Examine, test, really look closely at yourself. That's, that's what he's wanting us to do. As we look closely at the Word of God, he's, that, that's what he's telling us here. He says that, that, you, that you may prove yourself to be children of God. See, that, that's, that's what our lessons have been about. Who are we or who should we be? We should be children of God. And in, in truth, that's who we are. But as children of God, God says there's a way that we're supposed to act. That we may be so that you may be. Oh, there it is again. I love that. It just keeps coming up in the Scripture. To be. He said, you want, you want to be a child of God? Well, God says, here's how they act. Here's what they do. And if that doesn't fit you, then you need to do a little bit of work. If it doesn't fit me, I've got some things I need to do. It, it's, it's becoming. It's what Jesus talks about as, as becoming. Not, not just to be, but it, it's a process. Yes, you are. Yes, yes, you are a child of God. God's already said that. You are a child of God. You are a child of God. If you have been, if you've repented of your sins, if you've confessed Christ as Lord, if you've been born from above into His family as you were baptized into Jesus Christ, you are a child of God. You could never be more of a child of God. You will never be less a child of God. But whether you're a faithful child of God or not. See, once you've been born into a family, you're part of that family. Are, are we together there? You're, you're part of that family. And, and there's, there's, there's not a more precious moment in, 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 in anyone's life than, than whenever they're born from above into God's family. That's, that's, that's when not only the angels are rejoicing, but God's rejoicing. He's saying, well, look at, look at my new baby. Look at my new child. 
But it's not just what you, what, what you, it's not just to be a child, but it's also becoming and, and the growth. And, and, and chapter 4 of Ephesians talked about that. And Gary was there this morning, did such a good job. Thank you, Gary. The maturing process. So that you may prove yourself to be a child of God. The process. And what does that mean that you look like then? You see, do these other things so that you're, you can prove yourself to be a child of God. And, and people could take the Word of God and they could look at the word, what the Word of God says and then they can look at you and they go, okay, that, that, that fits. That's what should happen in the assembly. If, if an outsider comes into the assembly, our, our teaching needs to be clear enough that, that they're able to say, oh, that, that's what the Bible's talking about. Now, now, I, now I see it. Well, whether we're talking about the Lord's Supper or about our singing or about our, 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 our praying or, or about our, our Bible studying or about our giving or, or, or whatever it might be, the, the outsider should be convicted, be able to say, yes, that is exactly what God's talking about. And so there's some things we have to do so that we may prove that we have become children of God. But what does a child of God look like? Now that we have established that, what do we look like? He tells us we'll be blameless. Blameless. Didn't say sinless. He said blameless. You see, because the blood of Jesus has taken care of our sin. We, we don't say we've never sinned, because if we do that, we're a liar, and the truth is not in us. We confess our sins. And so the outsider coming in, he, he sees us confessing our sin, and, and he says, whoa, that's, it. that's exactly what he's talking about here. And, and that's why, that's why the, these people can put their faith in God, when they can say, I believe God, because it is God that said in, in Romans chapter 8, who, who is the one who's going to accuse you? He said, who can accuse you? Oh, well, Satan is going to be the one that does that. While we live, it's going to be a lot of people will accuse us. But he said, who, who can really accuse you before God? It's, it's Jesus that died. It's Jesus' blood that covers your sin. God doesn't see your sin. He sees the blood of His Son. So I need that. So He tells me, be blameless. Stay blameless. Stay blameless. That's why it's important before we take the Lord's Supper that we, that we examine ourselves. That's what it means to prove, to prove, to test. That we look at ourselves and make sure that we're in the right spot. That our heart's right before God. And then he says, is it number two, number one is blameless. Number two is innocent. Innocent. Another word that's used there is simple. Not simple-minded, but, but simple. And another word is childlike. You see, innocent, simple, like a child. That's what Jesus said. Except you become as this little child. You won't be there. You won't be there. What's the kingdom of heaven like, Jesus? The kingdom of heaven is like this, this little child. Look, at, look how innocent this child is. The child is born. That's why, that's why Jesus took the child into his lap and said that this is what the kingdom of heaven is like. That's, that's why God is, is, is so excited every time a child is born. It must, oh, he must, he must grieve every time a child is aborted. Because that child represents purity. That child represents perfection. There is no sin there. There's no sin to be washed away. So God can say, you know, look, look at this child. And, and then the other time in our life is whenever we're born from above, and, and God can say that again. Look, look at this child. There's no sin here. That's where God tells us to be. 
to be blameless, and some translations will say sinless. It's a good, good way of putting it. To be blameless, sinless. To be blameless, innocent. To be blameless, simple. To be blameless, childlike. And what does that make us? Children of God. Children of God. And such we are. But I need to hear this. You need to hear this. This is what God is talking about. And, and, and God is saying right here in, in these, these few verses together, four verses here. Four verses. He says, this. We, we get here, church. And he says, now you are the real thing. You are the real thing. No doubt about it. You, you are the real thing. We ought to have confidence in that. You are, you are the real thing. There's there not any pretending. There's not any cover-ups. You are the real thing. And what is the real thing? The real thing is light. You are the light. See, you shine. You shine and people see the light. One, one, one last quick story. A little bit of a confession here. I work in construction summer after my first year in, in college and working away from home, working for a painting company and, and uh, good, good people all around me. And, and I was, was at that time in, in San Angelo, Texas, 1969, and we were helping to, to build a, the high-rise dormitory at, at San Angelo State University. And uh, they had twin dorms there. Uh, they had a ten-story one here, and they were putting up this new one, and we were, we were doing the painting on that one. And, and uh, uh, they, they, they didn't have videos. They, they, they didn't have DVDs. They had television, they could get two channels, and they had theaters. There were two theaters in town. And I would work hard, we would work 10 hours a day, and I'd get off and, and I'd go eat. I'd, every night I had a big steak and, and, and big slices of big boy tomatoes and, and uh, french fries, and, and, and I'd, I'd worked hard, and so I'm, I'm eating, and, and then I, I want to, there's nothing on television. I mean, how many, how many, times can you watch gun smoke you, you always know Marsha Dillon's going to win it, it might look pretty bad sometimes but he's, he's always going to pull through he'll be there the next week so I'm, I'm driving home I'm, I, I always got the company truck because my boss was a deacon in the church and, and he said uh, you know Mike's a Christian he doesn't honky tonk and so he gets the company truck and if you men want to ride somewhere, you need to talk to Mike. And so I, I had the company truck. So I'm, I'm coming home from eating, and, and the men or wherever the men wanted to go, and, and uh, I'm, I'm headed back to the motel, and I look down this, this big, wide, dusty uh, street there in San Angelo, and I see the marquee to a movie theater, and I go, whoa, there's three theaters here in town. And so I just turned real big in that intersection. I, I pull down there, and there's not, there's not a name of the movie out front, but all the lights are on. They should have told me something. But I was, a, I was a dumb Texas boy. And so I go up, and, and, and the lady that sold me the ticket, she says, I don't think you want to see this. And I said, I'm 19 years old. Is there any reason why I cannot? And she said, I'll take your money. And I go in, and I didn't want to see that. I really didn't. It, it was a bad movie. And so I'm going, I'm, I'm going to leave. And I stood up to leave, and here's this man who's come in, and my eyes have adjusted to the darkness of the theater. And, and here's... Here's big gaps, and then there's little groups, and it's all men. And this man looks at me, and he smiles real big, and he said, you don't want to leave. And I said, oh, yes, I do. Yes, I do. And he said, oh, no, just sit down. It'll be okay. You don't want to leave. And I said, yes, I do. You know, and, and he's, he's getting closer, and I'm getting louder. And, and, and he said, you don't want to leave. And I said, yes, I do. And this young guy stands up way down at the front. He, I bet he had 20 people around him. And I recognized him. He worked with the concrete people on the same job that I worked. And he, he said, don't leave without me. 
And he comes running. I said, come on. And we ran out the front door of that place like Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. We couldn't put that place behind us fast enough. We got in the truck and, and, and we drove and, and we were just shaking and, and, and that was as a horrible experience. But what I'm saying is he saw a way out. He saw, not, not that I, I shouldn't have even been there, but he saw a light. Let me tell you what, church, there are people here in Anchorage that are looking for a light. It's all dark around them. It's dark. And it's bad. And their world is falling apart. And and they they don't see any light. And God says, that's who you are. You are the light. In the middle of a dark and a corrupted world. And you shine... That's who you are. Who are who are we? We are the children of God. Who are we? We are the light that shines in a dark place and gives light to the people that are there. You know if you're driving down the interstate and, and, and it's advertising and they've they've learned that. But you know in, in your kids, if your kids are little, you never get to decide where you're gonna eat. They always decide. Because there's these go- this big golden M that, that's up there. And they can see it from a hundred miles away. And, and McDonald's always wins. because You see it, you know what it is. And, and that's, that's who we are. When people see us, they should know who we are. And, and say, that's, that's the light. Don't leave without me. Don't turn the light off. I, I need, I need that light. And that's what God's saying right here. In the middle of a dark world, you shine as lights to the world. And two, two things here. Two things here. Equally good translations. Holding fast. Holding fast. Not letting go. Holding fast the Word of God. You don't ever let go of it. You don't ever let go of it. But at the same time, it means holding forth the Word of God. Do you see that? As you're holding it out there for people, you don't let go of it either. This is our lifeline. This is our hope. You are the light of the world. You're a city set on a hill. Cannot be hidden. You shine as lights in the world. Holding forth. Holding fast. To the word of life. If you need help tonight, come right now while we stand and sing. so long your savior is waiting to give you a place in his sanctified throne why not why not why not come to him now why not why not why not come to him now what do you hope dear brother to gain by a further delay. There's no one to help you but Jesus. There's no other way but His way. Why not, why not, why not come to Him now? Why not, why not, why not come to Him now? Do you not feel, my brother, his spirit now striving within? Oh, why not accept his salvation and throw off the burden of sin? Why not? Why not not come to him now? Why not? Why not? Why not come to him now? Why do you wait, dear brother? 
The harvest is passing away. Your Savior is longing to bless you. There's danger and death in delay. Why not? Why not? Why not come to him now? Why not? Why not? Why not come to him now? Please be seated. The table's been left prepared for anyone that was unable to take this morning. Straight down the hallway, the room is prepared. And to help set our minds for that, we'll sing number 203 if you're following the book. was Hallelujah, What a Savior. Man of sorrow, what a name for the Son of God who came. Ruined sinners to reclaim. Hallelujah, what a Savior. 